there do I see my mother? Oh, there do I see my father? Oh, there do they call to me? Oh, there do they call to me? Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. This game really shines, doesn't it? I really do apologise for making a pun. Puns really aren't my thing. I don't know why I did it. I just thought it would be funny. I'm just going to shut up. The reason why I'm sat here like an idiot is because I want you to buy God of... It's upside down. I want you to buy God of War, alright? Because this game is incredible. When it comes to the overall franchise, I'm a total God of War noob. I'll admit I never played any of the other God of War games and truth be told I thought it would be a franchise that I'd personally never touch. If that grinds your gears you're in for a long video. Before going in I did attempt to get a general understanding of what went on in previous God of War games though by watching several videos recapping it. I know it's not quite like playing through all the games in build up but it's better than knowing nothing about previous titles. Anyway God of War, the new one, seems to be something of a soft reboot so I haven't found myself confused just yet. Before we continue I think it will be wise if if I were to plant a disclaimer here, this is not a review, just a video telling you to buy the game. Seriously, buy it, you won't regret it. Fucking buy it. Also let's lay down a minor spoiler warning, I can't promise to not delve into minor spoilers, I can assure you that I don't get into any major ones, but when talking about the story I think it will be hard to not talk about things that happen at the beginning of the game. But now all that riffraff is out the way, let's get going. Like I said, I thought God of War was one of those franchises that I'd never touch, but this game has really captivated me. It's truly incredible. And not just incredible as in yeah it's great you get a good half a dozen really really good games every year the next one will be in about two months. This game is thoroughly incredible. I played the game for about five minutes before I found myself forgetting that I was sat in my bedroom playing a game and being fully immersed and invested in the story unfolding before me. Dare I say that this is clearly game of the year quality. As a brief outline the game is beautiful, fun, in depth, engaging, adequately challenging and filled with scenes, encounters and moments that will leave you in awe. For example we have this big snake ting getting about on his ones and this giant tree turtle living in a garden so beautiful you feel like you're actually on an acid trip in a landfill site. But that's probably more down to Cocknose over here and the fact that you're carrying a boar covered in runes than any of the actual lush shrubbery that has you wondering what kind of nutty psychedelics the witch who lives here can brew up when she's bored. Since she literally lives under a turtle bigger than a tree with an actual tree for a shell I'd say that they're pretty nasty and I think I'll stick to drinking away my sorrows instead. Back to the serpent though, that's an epic scene within itself. You don't usually see something meeting the average 12 year old boy's self proclaimed penis size out in the open. So if this scene doesn't amaze you, you're either a local bishop or a BBC presenter who's come out the other end of the midlife crisis. When I say the game's fun, I'm obviously talking about the gameplay. There's plenty of challenge to be had, movement is satisfying, and the same can be said for the combat. When it comes to boss fights, they are fairly challenging on moderate difficulty settings, though they can be hard if you run around like a headless chicken like me. They mostly require you to figure out how to exploit your foe's weakness, which often consists of throwing your axe and recalling it several dozen times. I'm not complaining, I love throwing my axe around. Some boss fights are definitely harder than others, but there's enough variety to keep them all interesting. As for Kratos' son being in the gameplay, that didn't feel like a ball and chain at all. In a lot of games where you have somebody accompanying you, it can sometimes feel rather limiting. With God of War this is not the case. Arteus has his uses and you don't spend half your time waiting for him to catch up. Like I said, the game does have its in-depth features, such as the crafting upgrading element that's present. Early on in the game you're introduced to an obnoxious dwarf, who I like to call Blue Wanker, who sets up a wares shop that you can visit to craft armour for Kratos and Arteus, as well as upgrades to Kratos' axe and Arteus' bow. You're later introduced to his equally obnoxious sibling, who I quickly nicknamed Shit Biscuit, who also has a shop you can utilise for the same purposes. As for levelling and skills, there is a skill tree with perks and things, and that's always a plus. They're not the most in-depth systems I've ever seen in my life, but they're exactly what they need to be. 
on to the most important thing in the game, which is of course the engaging factor of the story. I don't wish to get into too many spoilers here, but essentially at the beginning of the game, Kratos is living the life of solitude with his son Arteus after the passing of Arteus' mother at which point they set out for the mountain with their past loved one's ashes. Much to Kratos' behest since he believes Arteus isn't yet ready for that journey, but an encounter forces them to leave their home with haste. It's quite obvious that Kratos struggles with his parenting because let's face it, he's a grumpier git than a bulldog after you fire a staple gun up his ass, often treating his son with intense discipline. Despite this, you can clearly see that behind all that muck, Kratos does care and the game has moments where he does try to be more compassionate towards his son before hesitating and letting the moment pass. The story also presents clear development in Arteus as the further you get in the story, the more helpful he gets in life or death situations. The game also does a really clever thing where it uses Kratos' teachings towards his son to teach the player how to play the game, or at least be better at it. Honestly, I'm really amazed at how good the story is considering how isolated the characters are. Overall, the story can only be described as incredible and it's an experience that you won't regret having. On the topic of visuals, the game is stunning. It looks gorgeous, I haven't seen any pop-ins or frame drops either, which is a plus. Performance is all round rock solid, which you'd expect to be something sacrificed for a really good looking game. This game looks amazing and runs smooth and thus you'll find absolutely no complaints from me. But if there's one thing that I think would be worth mentioning is that for some reason around my screen there is a black box and the game isn't taking up my full display. I can't seem to find a setting to alter this either. I don't know what it's all about, but it hasn't affected my experience at all, so I'm not going to complain. Another really good thing about the visuals is that the game utilises as little HUD as possible when not necessary, sometimes only showing the compass at the top of the screen. This maximises immersion because nobody likes to see loads and loads of things on your screen when you don't need to be looking at them. And that's one thing that this game definitely has over Horizon Zero Dawn. Because as much as I love that game, I can't deny that it's a HUD fest. And I prefer the simplicity of God of War's HUD. All round, I really do like the visuals of God of War. To wrap all this up, despite not being very well versed in previous God of War titles, I've been fully invested in this game and I'm loving every single second of it. I find it to be a well-balanced, fun, beautiful and absolutely jaw-dropping masterpiece with an interesting story and protagonist duo with some interesting characters on the side. Now I won't give this game a number rating as like I said this is not a review, just hopefully an incentive for people to give it a go. Because in my mind if you don't at least do that then you're robbing yourself of an experience to a quality that gaming frankly doesn't see enough of anymore. In my honest opinion this game is a straight masterpiece and is 100% worth buying. So there you have it, that's why you should buy God of War. But thank you all for watching this video, I do hope you at least enjoyed and hopefully if you haven't already got God of War this video has helped convince you to get it because I honestly believe that it's one of those games that is done to a quality that we don't see enough of anymore. It's also another great example of PlayStation's amazing exclusives. But of course, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, go ahead and drop me a follow on Twitter, I would really appreciate that, and I'll see you all very soon with another video at some point.